Hi, this is Susanna Bowling and the Times Square Beat, and we are at the meet and greet of the body of an American. And we are with Casey Childs, the producer and founder of Primary Stages. Casey, what made you want to choose this play? Well, I've known Dan's work for many years. I've always wanted to produce Dan. I knew him, I guess I started write, reading his plays when he was still a student. And uh, then I was on a committee for the Horton Foot Award about three years ago, and I we read this play. We blind read all the plays, and we gave uh, honors to this play. And we followed it from there and decided this is an excellent script and just right for us. And it's also a playwright we wanted to work with. Now, what makes Primary Stages choose the bodies of work that it chooses? Well, we've since we were founded uh, in uh, 31 seasons ago, we've focused on a new American plays by new American playwrights. I look for plays that are language-based, uh, highly intelligent, uh, engage emotions as well as the intellect, um, and interesting uh, American writers. Hi, uh, so I'm Michael Kumsty, and I'm in this play called The Body of an American, playing Paul Watson. And Paul Watson's a real guy. He's a war reporter photographer who is most famous for winning a Pulitzer for a photograph he took in Mogadishu when the Black Hawk went down in 1993 and there was a dead soldier who was being paraded through the streets. He took a photograph of that guy, uh, which was an international sensation. Um, and the reaction to which is apparently largely why... Uh, Clinton pulled America out of Somalia. Playwright Dan O'Brien, who is also the other character in the play, has told Mike Crane, the other actor in the play, and myself, that we shouldn't be too bound to feel that we have to uh, do impersonations of these guys, that he's changed them significantly for dramatic purposes, that we can sort of inhabit them as, as freestanding characters. Um, that having been said, I've met Paul Watson, and he is, man, I would just, I would like to sort of like retire and, and have him as a mentor for a couple of years. He's fascinating. The things he's seen, the uh, life lessons he has learned and is prepared to sort of, you know, communicate his range of interests in science and philosophy and art and culture and everything else, his sort of pragmatic, right on the edge of cynical, but pragmatic view of the way the world works is all fascinating and he wrote a book which I read which was awesome dark but awesome now I'm fascinated that you got to meet with Paul Watson because he has been reticent about talking to people have you dealt with in the play the PTSD as well the play is very much about the uh, traumatic circumstances that he has experienced and um, uh, w the, the sort of dramatic hook for the play is the fact, and this is a real thing, that when Paul took that photograph of that soldier in Mogadishu, um, Staff Sergeant William David Cleveland, he felt that the man was talking to him. He knew the man was dead, but he felt that the man was talking to him, and he felt that the man said to him, if you take this picture, I will haunt you forever. And he's been wrestling with that ever since. And one of the things that he's learned is that he doesn't need to think of it as a, as, as a kind of hostile haunting, but he can construe it as he owes the man something. And what he owes him, I think, he would say, is to tell his story. And that allowing Dan O'Brien to write this play is part of paying his debt to that man who died in Mogadishu. This is Michael Crane. My character's name is Dan. And there are 15 other characters. Now, who is Dan? Dan is a playwright. Dan is the playwright who wrote this particular play. He's written himself into the play. Now, how much did you know about this photographer and this photograph before you started the play? I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about the photographer. The photograph... I was only 15 at the time, and I... And I, and I uh, so I wasn't all that aware of global politics at the, at the time. And... Uh, I might have heard of the photograph, but I, I'm not sure if I had. The reason I'm asking this is because I think a lot of people, especially young people that will come see this play, will not know. And I think that in what is going on in the world today, this is kind of relevant. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely relevant. And relevant, More relevant now than, uh, than ever. I mean, uh, you know, I think a big part of uh, Paul's... Um, work uh, is, is to uh, 
publicize um, these horrible things happening around the world. You know, I mean, like just yesterday, uh, 86 Nigerian people were, were killed by Boko Haram. Children, you know, burned alive, and and it and it's and it and it's and it, it you know, it, it, it's almost not in the news. Um, so wait, have you found since doing this play, you find yourself looking at this more and reading up on it more? I may, uh, I I might. I mean, I think I think I. I think I've become a lot more engaged <laughs> with with uh, news and global politics since I was fifteen. Um, but yeah, sure. I mean, it it catches my eye a little bit more now doing doing a show about this. The most interesting thing about this play, even though it's about two men, is it's directed by a woman, and we're talking Joe Bonnie. Joe, what made you and draw drew you to this project? Really, it's just when you're uh, first reading this script, it's just an extraordinary script to read. It's this beautiful piece of writing, but it's also highly, highly theatrical. It's not naturalistic. There are no individual characters in naturalistic scenes. It's like a, I keep on calling it a prose poem where two actors play dozens of roles and also play the same character. So it's it's a wonderful investigation of what it is to be theatrical, what it is to actually inhabit a character. And then the subject is huge about American politics, about individuals finding you know, who they are and this discovery of this friendship between these two men. But it's just the scale of it is massive because it ranges all over the world because Paul Watson is an extremely celebrated war correspondent and photographer and Dan O'Brien is a very celebrated uh, writer and poet, so the coming together of these two men is really fascinating. Making of the body of an American, we have Alex Koch here who's bringing the projection designs to full life. Did you have complete access to Paul Watson? Uh, Paul and I were able to speak uh, by email. Uh, we were in touch. Also, he, he ended up coming and joining us in the production, but he was incredibly generous and and gave us access to everything he has digitized and uh, those pieces he doesn't, he, he scrambled to find for us. So yeah, he, he really supported the production. Now, in picking the pieces, what were your favorites? The pieces of Paul's that were most interesting and attractive to me were those that um, maybe are less known. Uh, I was very aware walking in uh, to this piece that the audience if they'd done any research, would already know the few key images. So we were looking for uh, snapshots, things that might not have made it into the, the mainstream press. Do you think that the audience today, especially the younger audience, even knows who he is or will know these iconic photographs? Oh, that's a, a great question. Um, I think I think it depends if it's uh, somebody who's a, a newsmonger, as it were, and, and uh, particularly interested. I think that there's a resonance to these images. I think in our generation of looking uh, through the internet at a lot of uh, sort of referential material and trying to understand the world around us, people have probably seen these before. If not, they're, they're sort of recognizable in the gut. Well, one of the thing, things that I think is interesting about this production is that you do have a chance to bring a younger audience to see this that would not have known it. I mean, a 20-year-old definitely would not have known these photographs. Yeah. Um, the play does a good job of explaining not just how those photographs um, existed in our world, but how they came into being and the effect they had on uh, the world, on sort of a larger community. Um, and it does it by being incredibly personal about Paul's life, which uh, I, I think will draw people in and, and help a younger generation understand what was going on in the 90s, which is sadly a lot like what's going on right now.